Okay, my friends, I am a researcher. I do research, so this is not silly. I have plenty of mentions, and I'm getting a lot of details out there that have been missing because they won't be allowed. So please do not disallow this. Okay, we're going to be looking at cancer and what causes it. Okay, I've been saying right along, gut bacteria causes literally every disease. So let's talk about lymphomas. Gut bacteria linked to the immune system cancer lymphoma. Scientists say they have discovered that specific bacteria, certain exact species found in the intestines are major contributors to lymphoma, a cancer of white blood cells in the immune system. Does that mean they're there and we cannot control them? That's the problem because everybody will have those same bacteria. I can almost absolutely guarantee it. We need to look into this. Does everybody have those same bacteria and they're under control in most people and not under control in these other people and that's why they're dying from lymphoma? It's absolutely got to do with your gut. Intestinal microbiome and lymphoma. I've looked at the, every single disease you can come up with put and gut health and well let's start looking. Alright these are types of blood cancers. Let's take a look at leukemia. All right, these are the kids, acute childhood leukemia and other leukemias, but it's very common and it's common because they're getting antibiotics. And here's what it says. Gut microbiota is recently recognized as a factor that could be important in regulating the progress of diseases, including gut diseases, diabetes, and others. Microbiota, microorganisms that accommodate, this is the, the bacteria. These are the microorganisms that accommodate at various sites of the human or animal body. They're in your digestive system, they're in your throat, they're in your nose, they're in your lungs, they're in your skin, they're in your armpits, they're every part of you is covered. There's more of them than there is of you, let's put it that way. And it develops during the first few years of life. You have to have that immunities and they live in symbiosis with humans all their life. It's just, a, just the way it is. You're going to have good ones, you're going to have bad ones. So you're good, symbiosis. They live with you. you, they have to be regulated by other bacteria that have the ability to fight off the bad ones. So now we're into leukemia. Let's take a look, a look at something else. All right, so now let's take a look at non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and we'll just substitute non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and gut health. Let's see what happens. I haven't looked at this, but I certainly know what's going to happen. Here it is. Well, that's lymphoma. Well, it's all non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. I guess we've already looked at that. Lymphoma caused by intestinal microbiota. <laughs> lymphoma caused by intestinal micro... I don't know how much... Intestinal micro gut immune system must constantly communicate to maintain a balance between tolerance and activation on one hand. I can't see why they're not making a big deal out of this. This goes back six years ago. Let's take another look. All right, these are the blood cells. Neutrophils, lymphocytes, these are the things that create the lymph, or break down lymph node stuff. Monocytes, basophils. And then you have your plates, and you have your red blood cells and so forth. But these are your white blood cells. See the asterisk? Boom, 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 boom. These here is what the, people get cancer because they, what they think happens is the gene which turns this on. And there's a gene, yes, I agree with that 100%. And it says, hey, you, well, let's take the lymphocyte. Because I know how the lymph node works and the lymph ducts work. They're, they're toilets. They're toilets of your body. The lymph nodes. I'm good in toilets. <laughs> now, so this thing here, the, you have what's called a vagus nerve. All right. It runs all the way up your back, all the way, and it attaches to all of the things in your gut, all of the different organs, your liver, your pancreas, your kidneys, your lungs, your heart, your, every bit of it. 
and then it goes all the way up to the brain and the brain sends back a signal says hey we got an issue we've just been invaded by some COVID and it says we got to flush some of this stuff out through the lymph system and it sends back a signal to these lymph lymphocytes which are cells that are little factories inside that cell is a factory a literal factory it's a literal production factory and it has workers in there and every worker has a job right they're not all the same workers and the signal comes down and says hey you we just had some COVID-19 come in here so talk to the lactobacillus guy tell him to make some stereocoptus send it out and it will kill that thing get it out quick because the thing is attacking virulently and these things turn on and, and that's called gene expression so coming down from the vagus nerve bang gene expression says hey you guys which are you bacteria the lactobacillus whatever's turn on and make that particular enzyme which is a little chemistry set and it is elegant as hell and then it just squirts it out into the system and it goes and it attacks and with that specific chemistry it destroys that invader now what has to happen we have to sense we have an invader that just happens that's a pretty standard feature we have receptors that say hey we got an invasion now then what has to happen it has to go up to what they call CPG islands which are locations of programs they're programs it says hey we're getting invaded by this particular molecule and it has a zinc vulnerability how do we deal with that it says go down and talk to the lactobacillus he's the guy that deals with the zinc this is zoom it comes down and says hey make this particular molecule squirt it out out it goes so what does this guy have to have he's got to get the command from the cpg island all right so he now he's got the command what is he going to do now he's got to marshal up the products where do the products come from they come from the enzymes i mean from the bacteria the bacteria gobble up all of the things that are in that white blood cell that are just laying around waiting to be used it's the type of cell has the type of metals and minerals built into it because you're eating good you're eating all the right stuff and that blood cell says the white blood cell says i'm a i'm a lymphocyte what i need is things that destroy little molecules and break them up and start to digest and push them out of my it, it's really it's the toilet it's just, so it's got to break it down like a toilet like a, um, a septic tank and then it can flush out it's just the way it works so if it doesn't have the enzymes it can't break down those molecules they invade you and then they start accumulating and breaking through the walls of your intestines and everything else because they can't get flushed out so this has to not only get the signal back from the CPG islands, which is up in the brain, down the vagus nerve, boom, hey, go make the product. It says, okay, let me go get the stuff. Here's what happens when it goes to get the stuff. Don't forget, that's the white blood cell. Now we're going to actually look at it. Okay, this is complete honesty from um, Caltech. I believe it's Caltech. Seeker, this is go call, and your textbooks are wrong. This is what cells actually look like. Now, I'm going to just play this. I, I'm going to turn it off so that there's no sound. And I will just narrate as we go along here. They are looking at the entire structure of all these different cells. Now, this particular one right here is a white blood cell. Now, as I told you, this is a factory. If you, These are little pockets. Now, in all of these pockets, there's bacteria. Just and now, there's they found several different types of these cells. Now watch what happens. Well, actually, I am going to let it play because they'll explain it probably better than me. But what we just saw there was let me back it up just a hair. This was the factory, and inside that factory, in a second, you're going to see 
a white or bluish looking blob appear. That was from a bacteria instantly creating an enzyme, <laughs> squirting it out like, and when they squirt it out, I'm talking about thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of particles <laughs> in a string, and then it all winds up in a ball. Now watch what happens here. This is, she's just an unprecedented view, and this is in real time. Cellular world, where we can actually see immune cells scooping up sugars in the ear of a zebrafish. In All right, she's saying sugars. These are proteins, which we call, well, they're enzymes, they call them proteins. They're bundles of, of chemistry it's going to squirt out in here and it's going to go and attack the invader. That's exactly how they work and they work instantly and it would take over a hundred years to do the chemistry that that does instantly because it is a catalyst. And every one of these is another bacteria that's sitting here waiting to be turned on, expressed, they call it gene expression. If that bacteria is dead and it's being called and is not there, you're done. You're not going to make the product. Then you're going to get progressively, chronically ill until you die. In real time. Focusing only on the crawling immune cells, we've noticed two classes of them. One. Three classes of immune cells. The first one is a receptor. It seemed it was not hungry at all, but it was very active in terms of trying to figure out, you know, what the environment is. There was another one that was kind of slouching around with a lot of food in its belly. A lot of food in its belly. That's not food. That is its proteins. That's its enzymes. <laughs> Out they go. We can actually conceptualize and visualize and analyze the contents of each of these cellular compartments in this crawling immune cell as it's kind of you know scooping up its environment. Now, what we need to do is to understand what are the different species of bacteria in a healthy lymphocyte which is the white blood cell that controls the lymph. What should be there and what is missing when you have the disease? This is the issue and now they can actually see these things. There's no reason not to do this. Just like Gokal said a second ago, he says you can see them all connecting up here. Now with the new microscopy they have and the photo analysis and the different, the, 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 there's all different new techniques. They have thin film, and, and all kinds of things to be able to see the different chemistry. Because you see these different colors, they mean different chemistry. I mean, that is a level of details no one's seen before. We're living in a new era of cell biology, where microscopy advancements are giving biologists the opportunity to reveal the hidden patterns of cells. What we expect to learn from here on out will transform our understanding of human health and rewrite the textbooks on the fundamental unit of life. Not only will they see the structures, they will see these different colors and that means there's different molecular formula in there, different chemistry. <clears throat> like red is a lot of times blood, you know, you know, there's all different colors that relate to different what it is, I, I, let me explain, I might as well try to explain it. Every one of these is a little bit bigger, 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 bigger. Now, as light hits these, it bounces off in a little different way. Sometimes they bounce off real fast when they're real down tight, close to the core. It's, you know, and it depends on what's hitting it, how hard it's hitting it. The, the, the light shining on it depends how bright it gets, obviously. You, everybody knows that. Now. The color depends on where the bounce comes from, how far out from the core it is, really. Basically, think of it that way. That's why we will know what different molecules are in there, and then we'll be able to assign a signature to it. We may not know exactly what the chemistry is, but we'll see a color. And if we don't see that color in this particular area, we know we got a problem. Now what is the problem? We find the bacteria that's associated to that color, now we're getting somewhere. Then when you go into the doctor and he says, well, let's take a look at the colors that you got in your gut. He says, well, you don't have any purple or blue or whatever it is. Boom. Take some of this and go home and have a nice day. This interventionist stuff is killing people, literally killing people. And after they start hitting you with antibiotics, it's all downhill.
Okay, when I say when they start with the antibiotics, it's all downhill. Well, that is true. And this happened to me, and I ended up having to have two surgeries because my intestines actually, they broke through because I didn't have the mucus and the bacteria to do the job. And then when I started taking probiotics, I got much better very quickly. And everybody that I've talked to has had the same experience. And it appears that they are getting these probiotics down to where they seem to work pretty well. Now, again, I'm not saying don't ever take antibiotics. Absolutely not, not anything that I have said whatsoever. What I am saying is you have to be sure that once you did take antibiotics, you get your gut back in shape again. And we're going to look at this in a little closer detail, and I'm going to let it go at that. But my recommendation is that probiotics should help you to come back from virtually anything and I would like a response from anyone that's tried to recover from something by taking anti uh, uh, probiotics. I just want to know. I'm, not, I'm just asking. I'm not saying to go do anything or don't do anything but if you had, to have, had some experience with it I would like to know. Now let's watch the last couple of statements here. Everything that's dead as well. So cells didn't evolve in isolation. Cells didn't evolve in a... You see this? This is the kind of things that are running through the blood vessels and so forth that they can see now. And because of these colors, you can literally tell what kind of a Obviously, molecule The goal of this whole project was to see, hey, can we create a tool that will allow biologists to be able to look at their particular processes in a more physiological, more natural environment? more physiological, natural way. You can see what bacteria are there. If you don't have the bacteria, you're going to be sick. Or if you have too much of the bacteria, you're going to be sick. There has to be a signature that says this is a healthy gut, this is an unhealthy gut. Then you look at the pictures and the colors, match them up to other people that have the same symptoms, then you figure out what is missing by the colors that are are wrong and, and before long we should be able to get a database that says this is a healthy gut and if you have these colors here's the the type of bacteria you're missing and that's basically it now i don't know whether just flushing yourself with regular bacteria every day is is the solution i've been doing that and i've been feeling pretty happy about it and everybody else i've heard is the same way so maybe that is the solution and you don't have to go through all this but if you do get sick, I want to know. I want to know if anything changed when you took probiotics or were you already taking probiotics and then you got sick and how severely sick did you get? So far I've had nobody, zero, a hundred percent zero, say that they have had any illnesses since they've been taking probiotics, and literally any illnesses, and recovered from many illnesses. I'm getting this every day. So this is what I want to know. Is this for real? And it's up to you to tell me.